Hey there! Today we are working on a mixed media wood tag, a design team collaboration for ReneeBouquets.com and CraftyCity.com called Paradise in August. But first, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. If this is your first time here and you don't want to miss out on any further DIY craft videos from me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and notification bell for future updates from my channel, Bachik 777s DIY by Design. So what you see here, there are two treasure box kits from ReneeBouquets.com for this collaboration, number one or number two, and this is treasure box number two that we'll be working with. And then also from CraftyCity.com, we'll be working with Minte's collection papers called Paradise and in a pack of Prima Havana collection flowers called Valeria. So let's get started. What I've got here is a wood tag I picked up at Easter from Walmart. I picked up about six of them. They're $1.48. They're a nice size, but enough real estate to do a project on for the size that it is. And I think it's probably around a five by eight or nine inch size tag. So I've already kind of cut out the papers for the back of this tag and top and bottom, and I'm just ripping out a, a piece for the center. I'm using the B side of these papers. Um, as you can see on the A side, it's very busy, all those flowers, and the Minte collection is a little bit busy for me, so I tend to use the B side. When you're working with papers, oftentimes when you're flipping through a pad, uh, the, the papers that you see on top, if they're double-sided, is called the A side, and if you turn the paper over, that's the B side, and the B side is usually a little more muted. So off camera, I've sewed all my papers here, including the piece that I ripped, and I'm going to glue everything down in this project with Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. I love this glue. It holds down everything. And you can find it at all the craft stores, including Walmart. And what I'm going to do, whenever I glue paper onto something wooden, I like to... Um, what do I want to say? I like the edges to be neat. I don't like paper that I've cut to hang off the edge. So I'll take a piece of sandpaper and I kind of showed you very slowly what I do is I'm just taking the sandpaper and I'm basically sanding off the edge and see how it kind of melts that paper into the wood versus if you uh, don't sand it, the cut, if it's a little bit too big around the perimeter or something, it kind of hangs off the edge and I don't like that look. I like it to look nice and neat as if the paper was kind of melted into that tag. So I, I sand it uh, and that way the effect turns out just a little bit better for the way I like it. And it's real easy. Like I said, just turn your uh, wood piece on its end and then you take the sandpaper and you just run it along the end. It's real quick, it's real easy, it takes little effort and the effect's a little nicer. So we'll get this glued down and then we will start working on adding our embellishments. I like how this paper is ripped and torn, but once I start adding everything, you don't really see that so much, <laughs> which usually happens when you layer a lot like I do. And this is the first time that I'm kind of actually working with yellows. I don't work with yellows a lot, so this is new for me. So I'm going to be using a stencil. Uh, it's called Mini Tile Mania and this Prima uh, Paper Texture Paste. I love how textured it is. Look at that. Beautiful. And then the silicone brush I'm using is also from Prima. I really like this brush. I've had it for a long time. Um, it just helps to put on your uh, paste very easily when you're working with stencils like this. A lot of paste, like modeling paste and stuff, are more, are more smooth. And so this texture paste, uh, as I showed you, is it's a little bit more texturized. It doesn't raise up or swell up when you heat it or anything, but it just adds that texture to it, you know, aptly for what it's named, paper texture paste. Um, and now what I'm doing is just kind of softening the edges with my silicone brush. I think it just kind of makes it nice. And then I'm going to uh, start layering as that's drying, start working on, I mean, on this seahorse. This is from the treasure box kit. It's called, uh, it's Renee Bouquet's um, beautiful board, laser cut chipboard, seashell seahorse. And I am just putting it into this Versamark ink pad 
And then on top of it, I'm going to use this frontage embossing powder from my stash. It's kind of a mixture of like aquas and like white and a little bit of gold flakes. It's really pretty. I'm going to show you here in a minute what it looks like up close, not heated. Um, you can really see the texture. And then when you use the heat tool, it'll, it'll really melt and be all shiny. I'm going to bring it up here in just a second. There you go. See all the texture from it. And I'll heat it up close for you and you start to see how it gets all smooth and shiny. It's a really cool effect. I don't use embossing uh, powders a lot, but I actually really like them when I do. Later on, um, I decide that this uh, seahorse needs a little bit more color to it, so we'll go into that. Now what I'm using here, this is from the Treasure Box number two, Renee Bouquet's Beautiful Board Laser Cut Chipboard Ocean Bubbles Texture Panels. You get a set of two of those and I have just cut them into strips and I'm gonna layer them on my piece here along with some of these cut aparts from the uh, Minte Paradise Collection papers. And as I start to layer, because the chipboard raises things up, I need to take up that space. And so I am using some uh, chipboard from my stash. One side is kind of brown and the other side is white. I ordered this a long time ago from joannes.com and it said it was white, but it came only white on one side. But that's why it's those two colors. That uh, tag that you saw is from Renee Bouquet's uh, Beautiful Board Laser Cut Chipboard. It is a shell tag, it's the small size. And I'm just adding, this is just a metal frame for my stash. And see with that uh, beautiful board in that frame, that uh, tag needs to be layered and um, even with that stuff down below it. So that's why I'm adding the chipboard so it lays nice and even. Sorry about that, because I was kind of losing my train of thought. <laughs> this is just a tag for my stash. I was actually looking for something else, and I was like, hey, that matches. So I pulled it out and turned it over and used the backside. And you can kind of see here how layering that chipboard makes everything even. And you you know, you don't have to buy chipboard. You can uh, use foam sheets, craft foam sheets, uh, you know, cardboard from packaging material anything like that will work to take up the space I'm gonna add a piece of these ocean bubbles down below off camera you'll see later on I actually add a couple more uh, strips down below but um, I decided later later that I needed them after I was layering all my flowers so you'll see a little bit more down there this is Renee Bouquet's lace it is beautiful it's called Venice Rose Lace I'm going to cut off just a little portion of the flowers off of it I'm going to layer it down at the bottom this lace at the widest part is six inches wide and I love how it kind of swoops down into this floral design and I really wanted to use a little bit of that on this project I thought it kind of lended to a little bit of a shabby look This is a starfish with the center. It is uh, from a Nabo case, of course, laser cut chipboard starfish with accents. And the accents are the little flower centers that come with it. Later, I mean, you see me show you the flower centers again because I was going to use them on a project and decided not to. This is one of my favorite new releases from a Nabo case. Of course, beautiful board, laser cut chipboard. It's called the Elegant Ivy Flourish Pattern. It's a seven piece set. It's in this small. I am a sucker for swoops and swirls and the little accents of the leaves on there. It's just gorgeous. I'm gonna add a frame here. This is just for my stash. I'm gonna start bringing in some flowers. These are all Renee Bouquet's mulberry flowers. The ones in the center that are kind of the darker color are sea foam. The ones at the top that are sea uh, that are white and sea foam, and then the bottom ones are just white. And then these flowers are from Crafty City, from the Prima uh, Havana collection flowers called Varelia, Ver Valeria. To get that right, and I'm just going to start adding some flowers on here. I love these new sea foam color flowers from Renee Bouquets. They are gorgeous love the color love it it's kind of a mixture i mean they're called sea foam but it's kind of a mixture of like a little hint of green but not really but more like kind of a darker 
teal color or maybe like a medium kind of teal color just gorgeous my favorite uh color that renee has come out with since i've been designing for her here comes the seahorse and that has been about i'm going into my sixth year i think fifth or sixth year i love designing for renee bouquet she has the best product around here comes the seahorse right now it's still got that frontage powder on it but later i decide it's a little bit too light so i go around the edge and i darken the edges off camera i re-emboss around the edges and I use uh, Tim Holtz Distress Embossing Powder in Broken China. Uh, and then what I will do in the center to kind of remove some of that first embossing powder, I will show you in just a minute as soon as we place the flowers on. You can see again in the upper left corner those accents from the starfish because I was going to use them. I had embossed them and everything, but I just decided I just didn't want to. So there you go. But the great thing about Renee Bouquet laser cut chipboard is it's double sided. The uh, material that she uses on both sides, it's the same color, kind of a vintage white. So even though I embossed on one side, if that doesn't go with another project, I simply turn it over and now I've got the original color on the other side. So being kind of double sided like that works perfectly. So I'm gonna get some of these flowers down and then I will show you what I'm going to do. We'll bring up the seahorse here in just a minute and uh, kind of go over again what I've done and what I'm going to do. Okay, so earlier as we discussed, when you emboss, it gives us kind of a smooth, shiny finish. So it kind of acts like a resist. If you try to spray anything on it, it just beads off. So you can see on the seahorse around the perimeter where I re-accented it with the Tim Holtz uh, Distress Embossing Powder from my stash. And now I'm taking this stays on ink. It's called Cloud. It's kind of an off-white. And I'm painting the center of it to make it shine a little more, to make it be bright and allow those edges that I've darkened to kind of stand out a little bit more. So comment down below and tell me if you like that idea. And that stays on ink stays on there it is on there it didn't rub off or anything so um, I don't know if anyone else has tried that but by trial and error it worked for me and I'm going ahead and using that stays on ink and brushing it onto my flowers just to kind of distress the flowers a little bit normally I use like a uh, gesso or something like that but since I already had the ink out I went ahead and used that okay so we're going to add and the other little piece of the starfish down there you can see where I'm working with the starfish. You can see that other little panel of the uh, ocean bubbles down below where I added another little piece. I didn't want this part of the starfish to go to waste, so I thought it just kind of be act like nice texture kind of hosted in between the flowers there. And here I'm gonna add in those Prima flowers. And then I'm going to add in some tiny treasures butterflies from Renee Bouquet's. This first one is called Sweet Dreams. And then this other one that's in the yellow color is called Darling Yellow. And this does come in the treasure box number two kit. And now I'm going to add some um, Tim Holtz little stickers, little quote stickers here. These are going to become part of my title. Uh, whenever I have stickers, I don't rely on the sticker on my project because, you know, a month or two later, I've seen it, it's happened to me, it peels up. I don't like it. So I glue them down either onto the project or what I'm doing here, I'm gluing them onto the chipboard. I'm gluing it onto the brown side because this is going to kind of hang off the edge of my project a little bit. So when you turn the project over, what you see from the other side is the white side of that chipboard so it looks nice and finished off. It just kind of worked. I'm going to cut them out so it'll add a little bit of sturdiness to it too. So that's kind of nice. And I'm going to take the edge of my scissors and I'm just going to run it along the edge of this chipboard here and kind of roughen it up a little bit, give it a little bit of texture. Uh, this is a Prima Metal Street Sign embellishment from my stash. 
So by putting that on there and putting these Tim Holtz stickers on, basically my title is like, Love Your Path, Explore Your Path. go looking very pretty what I'm gonna do now is add a little more texture to the project I'm gonna use Tim Holtz distress spray stain and picket fence um, and I also use uh, the distress spray stain called broken China um, off-camera but I do the same procedure here both of these can be found at Renee Bouquet's so you just take the sprayer out and you tap it with a paintbrush and it adds splatters all over your project I thought that just added a little something to those background papers. I'm covering up the areas I don't want splattered. So I hope you enjoyed this project. I'll have all the links down below to everything I used on this project from ReneeBouquets.com and the two things from CraftyCity.com. I think it turned out really pretty. Can you believe I used yellow? Comment down below. No, Linda, I can't believe you used yellow. <laughs> I thank you for sharing your time with me. Please go ahead and follow me on my other social media links. I'll have those links down below. I'd love to have you there as well. I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.